We are happy to say that the cartoon introduction to climate change is now done. It's here. Here it is. I guess I was really thinking about it um, as a book that folks who care about climate change could give to their family and friends and neighbors who might not care all that much about climate change as a way to sort of uh, introduce them to the subject, to something that they care about, but it's not going to be sort of a gloom and doom, 300 page daunting kind of book. Do you have a favorite part of the book? Um, I always return to the page of uh, extinct animals. I guess they were just really fun to draw. So you got to actually come up with species names for these animals. Yes, yes. That was very well done. Thank you, thank you. That was fun. But I also like the um, page of postcards. <laughs> these are little, just little gags in the book. We don't have that many graphs in the book. We do have, of course, the Keeling curve of carbon dioxide concentrations. And you found a terrific way to present that, which was to uh, pair it next to the Mona Lisa and then there's the Keeling curve right the next to it. The most famous image in the world. Yeah. And then the book has great stuff for you know high school and introductory college classes. And, and it takes a while until you get to the stuff that is quote unquote controversial. So we have a chapter that talks about the history of planet Earth. And then we have a chapter that talks about the ice ages. And it's not until you know the uh, fourth or fifth chapter that we finally start talking about CO2. And then we start talking about the greenhouse effect. And I feel like that's a pretty subtle part of the book, but I feel like it's potentially effective, especially as a way to reaching out to folks who might be a little skeptical about climate change on the, on the front end. And I think we do try to talk about ideas like revenue neutral carbon taxes that could have some appeal across the political spectrum, because if you had taxes on fossil fuels, then you could use the money to reduce taxes on income and savings and investment. I think that all of our books, we try to engage audiences at different levels, and so you could look through the book and overlook that, skip that part, not notice that because you're going through and you're getting the jokes and learning a bit of the material, or you could really go back and do a second reading yeah. uh, and get a lot more details that we put into the, uh, that we put into the book. Basically. Yeah, and I think that's something that our books do ex extremely well, mm -hmm. is putting these uh, issues in the context of the reader. You are there with the material because of the way the characters are designed, and you know, instead of the earth tilted over, freezing on one side and burning on the other. It's, you know, a, a person in tidy whities And um, the tidy whities allows us to have a little bit of quasi-bathroom humor, and that, that never hurts. can only be a good thing. And uh, it's a hopeful book, as well as a descriptive book. And each page needs to be great, and I think we did it. And that's impressive, because the subject matter, you know, potentially very dire. Now it does so happen that what started out as sort of this scientific curiosity now turns out to be, uh, you know, one of the more important issues of this century. And uh, we hope that the cartoon book is going to be a, a small contribution to the discussion about that. And as we say at the end of the book, you know, sort of good luck to us all.